Hi, uh, th this is a video that goes along with the um, uh, kind of an interesting one for students to do. This is a, a nice kind of hands-on activity uh, to get students thinking about the science behind sound and music. So if you have, if you have musicians, if you have uh, students who are really into sound, if you're doing a unit on waves or sound, or uh, if you want to include the arts with science, something like music, um, all you need are, are some, you know, some pieces of wood, perhaps. Um, it could really be any kind of object, uh, and rubber bands. Uh, what's nice if, if you have a supply of rubber bands of different sizes, you could have different thicknesses, you could have different lengths, skinny ones that stretch really far, skinny ones that stretch only a little bit, um, the thick ones which are really kind of kind of tight. Um, any variety of these are really wonderful to have, and all you all the, the students really need to do is find something that they can stretch the rubber bands on and allows them to kind of almost like pluck it like a guitar or a violin, um, almost like a string. I don't know how well it's going to pick up on the camera, but when you pluck these, it definitely has a, a, a different kind of tone. It, it produces a nice sound. And even though it's the same rubber band, this side is, is not um, quite as long as this side. It's stretched a little bit shorter. And they have slightly different tones, different pitches. With something like this, students can really start to investigate what changes that sound that they hear, what changes, what makes it a, a higher pitch or a lower pitch, um, a different note. And with this piece of wood, I, I, can, I can pull on this a little bit and change how hard the rubber band is stretched. So I can, I can listen to it right here. Oops. But when I stretch it tighter, it has a, a different pitch to it. It goes a little higher. If I loosen it a little bit, make it a little bit shorter, that changes the pitch as well. So you can, you can do this, and you can have different types of rubber bands on here. You can change how hard they're, they're pulled, what the tension is. You can change the lengths of them just like you would on a guitar or violin, and, and you can change the notes that are played. So um, let, let your students just kind of build their own rubber band instrument and give them a challenge. Um, ask them to go ahead and, and actually see if they can uh, make a, a simple song, okay, a well-known song or a nursery rhyme or something, um, and see if they can, can actually get the notes to play that song. Um, but from the science side, uh, this is, even before you, you talk about this in class, I, I let my students do this right away before we, we actually start to study or talk about sound. Um, let them investigate, let them experiment, and see what happens if you, if you tighten it or if you make it looser. What happens to the pitch that you hear? What makes a higher note versus a lower note? Um, what does the thickness of the rubber band do? Thinner ones tend to be a little higher pitched than the, the really like thicker rubber bands. Okay? Um, all of this are things that they can do before they, they think about how an instrument works or how the music is played or what causes sound. They, they can figure all that out. The wavelength, which has to do with the length of the stretched part of the rubber band, um, how fast it vibrates. Uh, if it vibrates faster, it's a higher pitch. If it vibrates slow, it's a lower pitch. And they can do all that by just kind of playing with it and experimenting with it. Um, look in the lesson plans. It, it has some ideas as to what you might give students as, as they do this activity. And good luck. Have fun with it.